So let's get into uh, let's get a little bit into politics here. So I'm I've been reading this book. It's called Causable Crisis by Vojin Yuksimovich. I'm not done with the book yet. Ha- yeah, I'm kind of a slow reader, to be honest with you, so whatever. Plus, I don't read all the time. I'm usually just writing or reading the news. Um, very interesting story that Mr. Yuksimovich presents in the book. He brings up the story of a town in Kosovo called Rachak. Rachak was uh, a place of a lot of media attention back in the 1990s because there were reports that the Serbs had massacred the Albanians and that 40 Albanians, 40 or so Albanians were killed in the town of Rachak. So the Serbs uh, were accused of, of, of uh, massacring dozens of Albanians in Rachak in, in Kosovo. And the American government began to bash the Serbs and tell the Serbs, oh, you're murderers, and this is terrible, and we're going to bomb you if you don't stop fighting the KLA. Very interesting situation in the war in Kosovo between the Albanians and the Serbs, between really the Serbs and the KLA. Because I don't like saying between Albanians and Serbs because many Albanians were against the KLA and they had zero interest in joining the KLA, and they had no interest in joining the cause of the KLA, and they, in fact, had no problem with being under the Yugoslav government. So I, I say that it was a war. It was a it was an anti-terrorism war. It was a counter-terrorist operation that the Yugoslav government in Belgrade was conducting. And it truly was counter-terrorism, because you had the KLA, they were committing terrorist acts, they were murdering police officers, kidnapping police officers, they were kidnapping civilians. Uh, they were uh, murdering uh, officials. There was uh, a Serbian official. I think he was the mayor. He was some sort of a politician. I, if I had to guess, I would say he was the mayor of a particular town uh, in Kosovo. And they found his body. His eyes were mutilated. His face was mutilated. His, his body was mutilated. And it was a very... Um, it was a very uh, grisly murder. And there were a lot of stories like this. There was a shooting that took place uh, in which you had several Serbian youths who went to a bar, and then KLA uh, gunmen went into the bar, they, and they opened fire, and they murdered six Serbs. And this was a very, very big story. I know that in America we hear a shooting and we think, oh, yeah, and no big deal, you know. 20 people murdered in a Walmart, and we're pretending that this is a stable society. Uh, but in Serbia, they, they, they make a much bigger deal about it because, well, I think it's because it doesn't happen so much over there. Uh, they're not used to it like we are. Americans are very used to violence because America is a very violent society. And uh, the, the Serbs, you know, they had no choice but to conduct an anti-terrorism or counter-terrorism operation against the KLA. So fast forward to Rachak. Uh, the KLA said, oh, look, we found 40 bodies of dead Albanians. They were murdered by uh, the Serbs, and this, this is how bad the Serbs were. So they had a, uh, they had a forensic specialist from Pristina look at the bodies, and this forensic specialist concluded that these people were not mutilated. There, there were no signs of torture. They, there were no signs of them being executed. Uh, these people had bullet holes, but there were no signs that they had been uh, executed. And a lot of the bodies had been tampered with, so a lot of the mutilations or the lacerations on the bodies were done after the people were dead. And, and they, they, had, they, were, they had all these signs that the lacerations were done later on. So in other words, there was tampering of the bodies that was done. Uh, and then, very interestingly enough, before the massacre was reported, uh, there was a counter-terrorism operation that was done in Rachak. You had Serbian uh, forces, Serbian officers go into the town of Rachak. They had nothing to hide because they actually invited 
the Western media to come to the town to observe the uh, to observe the counterterrorism operation being done. Two American journalists, both writing for the Associated Press, arrived in Rachak and they wrote about the operation. They watched the operation and they said, you know, it was a basic operation, basic gun battle between Serbian forces and, and the KLA. And the KLA was, of course, defeated because the KLA, for the most part, was a bunch of riffraff who uh, were heavily undertrained, especially in comparison to the Yugoslav forces who were very well trained. And uh, that was it. There was no uh, report of a massacre. The AP journalists didn't see a massacre. I think they found maybe one dead body, and that was it. And then I want to say maybe... I want to say days or weeks after the operation, uh, all of a sudden there were these talks of a massacre in Rachak. And all of a sudden they found these bodies. And, and the KLA said, oh, look, here, here is the, the ditch. This is where they, and they... They had all these bodies lined up in a ditch. And they said, look, this is where they did a mass execution. They shot all these people. But when the, when the site was observed, they didn't find that many bullets or they didn't find that many cartridges, bullet cartridges, in the ditch. So if this was a mass execution, you know, if this was the mass execution of 40 people, you're talking about dozens of people, you're talking about lots lots and lots of gun rounds being uh, triggered, and you don't find many bullet cartridges in the site of the crime, the supposed site of the crime. So that was a point of suspicion that there was media manipulation that was taking place. Then, uh, after the uh, the forensic specialist in Pristina looked at the bodies and said, you know, it looks like these bodies were tampered with, there were some forensic specialists from Finland who came, and they looked at the bodies, and they observed the bodies. Now, this is Finland. Finland is not a country that's pro-Russia. It has a history of war with Russia. So you can't say that th there was bias going on. And the specialists from, from Finland, the Finnish specialists, they looked at the bodies, and they also concluded the same thing that the forensic specialists in Pristina concluded. Then there were, there were a number of articles that came out in the Western media uh, that basically concluded that a lot of people were fooled by KLA manipulation, that the KLA was manipulating people into thinking that there was a massacre when there wasn't a massacre. These were people who had died in the war, and they simply just took the corpses, lined them up in a ditch, and said, Oh, look, massacre done by evil Serbs. And people believed it. So this makes me wonder. This makes me wonder about Bucha. Similar story. Bucha was taken by the Ukrainians. Russian forces left. Within the first few days of Bucha being retaken by the Ukrainians, there was no talk of a massacre. Just like after the operation in Ratchak, there was no talk of a massacre. And Ratchak was under the control of the KLA. Even though the Serbs defeated the KLA, they were dominating the KLA, Ratchak was technically under the control of the KLA. There was no talk of a massacre for days. Then, all of a sudden, there was a massacre in Ratchak. Well, why didn't they say it initially? Same thing with Bucha. The mayor of Bucha did not bring up that there was a massacre in his town, right after the Ukrainians retook it from the Russians. All of a sudden, days later, there was a massacre in Bucha. There is massive media manipulation taking place. That's my position about Bucha. I do not trust the media narrative, and I think as time goes on, people will realize, I think the truth will come out that there was manipulation taking place. That's my opinion. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you have the, uh, the case of the two Nazis in Bucha. One of them saying to the other, hey, if they have uh, white, um, white uh, 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 patches or white uh, armbands, can we kill them? Because the people who are for Ukraine, they wear yellow yellow band. The people who are pro-Russia, they wear a white band. And one Nazi tells the other, and this happened, this was recorded in Bucha. One Nazi tells the other, if they have white armbands, can we shoot them? And the other says, F yes, you can. Why are they shooting people with white armbands? 
because they were shooting people who were on the side of Russia. That's what happened in Bucha. I think that there is massive media manipulation taking place. We've seen we've seen already obvious signs of this. I mean, there was uh, people saying, "Oh, the Russians are plucking teeth out of Ukrainians. They're so evil, just like Nazi, just like Schindler's List, plucking teeth out." But then they talked to the local dentist in the town, and the dentist said those teeth were not plucked out by Russian soldiers. Those are teeth that were in my clinic, that were in my dental clinic. It was stolen from me, and it was used for propaganda. Or like, for example, the Ukrainians were saying, oh, uh, Russian soldiers raping infants. That turned out to be a lie. Turned out to be lies. There was a Ukrainian woman. She was uh, some kind of a propaganda. She was in the Ukrainian uh, parliament. I can, I'm going to try to look her up real quick. But she was making up lies. Um... Let me see here. Hold on. That the Russian soldiers were raping infants. They're raping infants, guys. And it was such a blatant lie that even there were Ukrainians in the media saying that she should be kicked out from from, from her position in the Ukrainian parliament. And she was. You know, she was eventually thrown out. Let me try to find her name. Um... It was just a blatant lie. So like, we can't just sit here and say, oh, well, the media says this, the New York Times said this. Like, you, you can't just fall for, manipula- for the manipulation. You can't just automatically have, have this knee-jerk reaction and just accept the stories. Uh, let me see here. Um, I'm going to try to find the, the story. But yeah, there's just... I'm just not going to fall... I mean, Think about it. America right now is in the middle of a proxy war with Russia. Middle of a proxy war with Russia. You don't think that they're going to lie about some stuff to make the Russians look evil? Kind of like, oh, Saddam Hussein is evil? Kind of like, oh, Bashar al-Assad is evil? Kind of like, oh, Iraqi soldiers are killing children in incubators. Remember that one? Let me try to find the story here. Uh, Ukraine. Let's see here. I'll try to find it here. Russian soldiers rape babies. Lie. Let's see here. I forgot. Let me try to see if I can find it. Parliament. I need to find the story. I hate this. Lies. Whatever. What do you think about the Sevranika genocide in 1995? I, I need to look into it. I, I, I haven't seriously studied that. Uh, it may be the first time I tried it. I'll let you know. Who cares? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. I have blackjack chewing gum. You guys aren't even like talking about anything that I'm talking about here, which is a damn shame. I'm kind of, I don't know. This, uh, how many people are even listening to me? I don't even know. Um, what was her name? Ukrainian woman. Duck, duck, go. And the thing is that the, it's easier to be pro-Ukraine than it is to be pro-Russia, right? Like it's easier just to just to believe in everything they're saying against Russia and and everything they're saying that's pro-Ukraine. It's just so much easier to do that than it is to be skeptical of the narrative. It's just so much easier because like if I'm pro-Ukraine, all I got to like if I'm pro-Ukraine and I'm talking to a guy who's pro-Russia and he's like, "Listen, uh you know, this whole thing with Butch, I'm not sure." And and all all I need to do is just smugly say All I need to do is smugly say source. <laughs> Go on Google, literally do a 3-second Google search and be like, Here is the evidence. New York Times. That's all I need to do. Right there. Done. I look good. I look like I'm winning the argument. I look like I have all the information. Whereas when you're skeptical, 
you have to go to like DuckDuckGo. And you can't go to Google because Google, everything's controlled. The search. Have you noticed that the search results for Google are just completely, just completely controlled and stagnant? Like I'll search for something on Google and, I, and I'll get most of the stuff that I get now, most of the search results. And it's not just with Russia, it's with almost anything. Most of the search results that I get from a Google search literally have nothing to do with what I searched for. Nothing. Like I'll search for something. I'll get the opposite of what I'm searching for. Have you guys noticed this? And so I'll say, okay, let me just change the search a little bit. Maybe I'll get better search results, right? So I'll change. I'll change. I'll add a word, or I'll take away a word, or usually I add words just to make my search more specific. And I'll literally get the same damn search results as I got before. And Google never used to be this way. This this, this has been going on within the last past I don't know three years or so. But it wasn't this way before. It was not this way. I remember years ago going on Google, searching searching for stuff and actually getting stuff that I searched for. Same thing with YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google, so you get the same thing. Same thing with YouTube. I go onto YouTube and I search for something and I get like a whole bunch of crap that I never even searched for. Like I didn't even search for this stuff. But YouTube is like, well, in accordance to your past search results or your past search history, we're just going to give you all these videos that are absolutely, literally nothing, do not pertain at all to whatever it is that you're searching for. Dude, guys, it is annoying. It is aggravating. So aggravating. So aggravating. Here it goes, guys. I think I found the story. I've been using DuckDuckGo and I've been using um, Yandex. How about Katyn massacre of 22,000 Polish military officers by Soviet Russia NKWD in 1940 who blamed Nazi for doing that? They blame the Nazis. You see, I have actually have heard the opposite about Katyn. I have heard that the Nazis were the ones blaming the Russians for that. And it was actually part of German propaganda to try to get the Poles on the side of the Germans. So I would also question Katyn. That's my opinion. Could be wrong. But communists weren't great. The communists did a lot of evil things. So I'm not going to be like completely pro Soviet Union here. Okay. Um, let me see something here, guys. Parliament. No. Uh, let's see here. Here it is. Here's the story. <sighs> here it goes, guys. For those of you who uh, smugly express your support for Russia and, you know, you try to come across as some edgelord, NATO apologist... Oh, it burns the back of my throat. Here is the story. This is why I do not fully trust the narrative. This is why I question the narrative when it comes to Ukraine. Instead of just being a smug NATO supporter who's like, Source, here's the New York Times said this. MSNBC said this. Therefore, it's true. This is why I say you got to wait. Ludmila De Denisova, disgraced ombudswoman, fired by Ukraine parliament, admits she lied about rapes committed by Russian soldiers. She said that she exaggerated reports of sexual crimes by Russian soldiers on Ukrainian civilians in a bid to convince the world to provide weapons and pressure on behalf so on behalf of Kiev. So all this stuff about oh he says that uh that Ukraine's got a Nazi problem? Oh yeah, what about Russian soldiers? I read on MSNBC, NBC, ABC, the whole alphabet. I read that the Russians are committing atrocities and crimes. 
when I know damn well that NATO is in the middle of a proxy war with the Russians, and of course, they're going to be saying stuff to make the Russians look bad. A week after Ukrainian lawmakers fired Ombudswoman Lyudmila Denisova, she has reportedly admitted that she exaggerated reports and lied about rape by Russian soldiers to gain more sympathy and weapons from the rest of the world to continue the war with Russia. Russian news agency Sputnik made the revelation in a bombshell report. This is from the International Business Times, in case you're wondering. Here she is, the liar. Just a week after she dis- after her dismissal as the chief of Ukraine's rights panel, Denisova, in an interview to a local Ukrainian publication, admitted that she lied about the incidents of rape. She said that she exaggerated reports, etc., etc. Denisova claimed that her lies would help earn sympathy for Ukraine and would convince the rest of the world to supply weapons. This article has literally repeated itself like three times. Um... Since the beginning of the war, Denisova's dramatic claims have been re- reproduced in dozens of respectable outlets, respectable outlets, including CNN, Washington Post. Hello, guys, seriously, it is so easy to be to look good being pro-Ukraine, right? Because the media is on your side. Oh, see if I if I'm like you know what guys I don't I'm, I'm not sure about this whole Ukraine thing man it's got some weird stuff over there got you know torch lights and some Nazi shit over there guys you got like Nazi Boy Scouts and they're praising Nazi collaborators and some weird shit going on here guys <laughs> yeah but this article on CNN says that Russian soldiers rape kids you know like do you really trust that like do you think that there's like, don't you think that there could be some bias in the reporting because there's a proxy war going on? Well, actually, it's right here in the mainstream sources. What do you got, RT? See, you look, and you, you look like you like you, you look like you have the truth on your side because all you need to do, like, for guys like me, we got to spend hours researching Ukraine. We got to spend hours. We got to look through the. We have to. We have to cut through the controlled search results of google we got to go through the stuff we got to find different news sources go to different european media outlets don't just go to american find stories and 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 find uh admissions and find you know stories like this where people are admitting that they lied you really have to wait for the truth to come out you know there's that saying that says something like a lie will travel the whole entire world before the truth can put its shoes on that is true because you gotta wait you gotta wait you know, right when the war began, boom, you had Bucha, right? In April of, of 2022, boom, Bucha. There's Bucha. Was it April or March? I don't remember. I think it was in April. I'm not sure. But the war began in late February. And then um, and then it, it didn't take that long for Bucha to pop up. Yeah. Bucha massacre. March. So, yeah, you had February. <laughs> Boom, March, Bucha. So very, very advantageous that they have a story of a massacre so they can harken back to Nazi Germany to make Russia look evil. Like it just, boom, right there. So Washington Post, CNN. So in other words, you could have been one of those cocky ass guys and say, and you could have said, oh, CNN and the Washington Post has an article here about Russians raping kids. See? Claims were often taken at face value, of course, because everything the Ukrainians say is freaking true, with reports claiming that the Russians raped a six-month-old girl with a teaspoon. I mean, they're just making up stuff. And this is the type of... Cr- I mean, listen, the, <laughs> I mean, the Ukrainian nationalists committed horrendous crimes back in the Second World War. But, hey, those uh, murderers, they're heroes, according to Ukraine. How the hell could you trust these Frankensteins? She looks like Frankenstein. She also cl- looks like a mummy. She also claimed that the baby was verbally and anally raped and that her nine-month-old daughter was raped with a candle. Oh, yeah. That, let's just make up any nightmare scenario we can think of. So it came out of her sick-ass head. So the only, so really, this was taking place. Like these stories, they weren't in reality. They, they were in her sick-ass warped brain guys 
Her ouster and eventual admission to the lies now raise questions about the allegations made against Russian soldiers of committing sex crimes on Ukrainian civilians. Can we please have a little bit of logic here and not be so gullible, not be so quick to believe the stories, not be so... so fast and just absorbing you know anything that's pro-ukraine guys i mean we are in the middle of a war right i mean not directly but america is in a proxy war with russia and if the ukrainians did an atrocity do you think the americans are just gonna oh yeah look the ukrainians are are doing bad guys her lie sounded like it was written by a psycho and posted on a deranged form yeah absolutely It came out of her sick-ass, twisted brain. Reminds me of this saying, what takes 10 brilliant men to build, it takes one full... (laughs) Wisdom. That's wisdom right there. That right... Yeah, I'm going to read it to you. I'm I'm going to read it. What takes 10 brilliant men to build, it takes one fool to destroy. There's a Middle Eastern proverb. A fool throws one stone into a well, and it takes 10 wise men to get it out. It's easy to kill. It's easy to lie. It's easy to destroy. What's very difficult? Telling the truth can be very difficult, especially when you're facing adversity. Going to medical school to save people's lives is very difficult. It takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of knowledge. Uh, a brain surgeon or any sort of surgeon goes through years of schooling to get to his position so that he can save lives. But any idiot can kill somebody doesn't take any time to kill somebody. doesn't take any training or intelligence to kill somebody. doesn't take any training or, or, or intelligence or, or serious uh, knowledge and wisdom to lie. Anybody can lie, but very few people have the courage to tell the truth in the face of adversity. You know, it's very easy for anybody to tell. Anybody can tell a lie, right? Anybody can slander. Anybody can mock. Anybody can scoff. Anybody can do libel and try to ruin and destroy someone's reputation. But it takes courage, serious courage, to tell the truth in the face of adversity. That takes courage, guys. That takes serious courage. That's why I don't believe these stories. I do not fully believe them, guys. I don't, well, uh, CNN, said, uh, Washington Post, oh, well, it, this woman's full of shit. You're believing the bullshit. Uh, how do we get American to be on our side? I don't know. Let's see. Hmm. Russian, Russian soldier rape baby. How old will baby be in story? I don't know. What do you think, Ludmila? Let's say six month old infant. Yes, yes, perfect. Make up lie. Speaking of Russia and Ukraine, have you guys ever seen the film Brother 2? Has anyone here ever seen the film Brother 2? Have any of you guys ever seen the film Brother 2? That is such a good movie, guys. It's a Russian film that was made back in the 90s. Actually, in 2020, President Putin has apologized to Polish people for a Katyn massacre. Oh, okay. Uh, did Putin apologize? 2010. I did not know this. Okay, let's look this up. Putin, 2010. Apology. Polish people. My Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, Goose Hunter, I'm so happy that you told me this. So Putin admits, hold on, what did Putin say? We bow our head, okay, this is what Putin said, let's, let's read it together, okay, this is from the, this is from the New York Times, okay, New York Times. Okay, let's read this. Let me uh, lower down my screen here. Okay. So it says here, this is from 2010. Prime Minister Vladimir V. Putin on Wednesday became the first Russian or Soviet leader to join Polish officials in commemorating the anniversary of the murder of thousands of Polish officers by the Soviet Union at the beginning of World War II. Mr. Putin cast the executions as one tragedy out of many wrought by what he called the Soviet Union's totalitarian regime. 
Guys, I'm telling you, it's bullshit what they say about Russia. Uh, so much bullshit what they say. They'll say, oh, look, uh, Russia is going back to communism. It's go How can it be going back to communism when you literally have stories like this? We bow our heads to those who bravely met death here, Mr. Putin said at a site in the Katyn Forest close to the Russian city of Smolensk. Where 70, year old, where 70 years ago, members of the Soviet secret police executed more than 20,000 Polish officers captured after the Soviet army invaded Poland in 1939. So Putin apologizes about the massacre of Polish people by the Soviet Union, Polish officers by the Soviet Union, but Ukraine banned the movie about the Volan massacre. I wish people could open up their eyes. I wish people could open up their eyes and say, Oh, Russia, so Russia, but uh, Ru The Ukrainians admitted to the massacre when they needed to. For years, the Ukrainians have been adamant about not talking about Volin banning a movie about Volin not refusing to go to the to a presentation of the film Volin for the uh, for the Ukrainian um, uh, the the Ukrainian ambassador to Poland praising those who committed the massacre building memorials and naming streets after those who massacred people who massacred Polish people for example naming a street at naming a street after uh, uh, Ula Samchuk, the collaborator, who praised the Bobby the uh, uh, Bobby Yard massacre, one of the worst massacres of Jews in the Holocaust. Or Zelensky giving an award to a Ukrainian OUN officer who annihilated an entire Polish village. But let's ignore the fact that, wow, Russia actually admitted that it did wrong. Turkey does not admit to the Armenian genocide. Japan does not admit to Nanking. Ukraine does not admit to Volin. But Russia admits to its wrongs? Huh. Tells us a lot about the differences between Russia and its enemies. But Russia is so evil, guys, so evil. Raping six-month-old baby, so evil, so evil. Ra Putin is a uh, fascist. He's fascist. But let's support Ukrainian fascists. Let's praise Ukrainian fascists who collaborated with the Nazis, who butchered people, who butchered tens of thousands of people. Let's name streets after the murderers. I mean, there was a Russian... There was a Russian electrical engineer who had a street named after him in Ukraine. The Ukrainians said, we must change his name, remove his name from street, because he's a Russian, Russian bad. Okay, so they gave, they gave it to a vote to the people of Kiev. What do you want this street to be named? Whose name do you want uh, for this street? Right? Who should we rename this street after? The majority of the people who voted said, what? Ula Samchuk. So you're telling me that you remove the name of this Russian electric, electric engineer because he's Russian, right? He wasn't a murderer, wasn't a rapist, wasn't a mass murderer, didn't, wasn't a Nazi collaborator, didn't do any of that shit. Just a freaking electrical engineer. He was like a Russian Thomas Edison. And you got rid of his name and said, no, we want Ula Samchuk. Do people not see how insane this is? This is like saying, okay, we have a street named after Thomas Edison. We have Thomas Edison Street. No, 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 no. We want to remove his name and replace it with a KKK leader. Th that's how insane this is. It's, it, this is complete insanity, guys. But no, but no, Ukraine, they're the bad guys. They're, they're the bad guys. Because well, they were invaded. They, they were invaded. Yeah, they were invaded. Do you know who else was invaded? The KLA was invaded. The Nazis were invaded. The Japanese imperialists were invaded. A lot of bastards were invaded. They were invaded. I don't know. I don't know. Time Magazine. Oh, CNN. Washington Post. They said this. But nobody can think. People refuse to see the reality for what it is. And when the reality is presented to them, 
they gaslight, they, and they deflect. Because that's the best they got. All of those that doesn't apologize are all nations with fascinations for fascism. Yeah, absolutely. Fascination for fascism. Tell, tell, uh, these tell us that the ghost of fascism will resurrect and push the world toward the next war. Absolutely, we agree. Fascism has not died, everybody. It has always been amongst us. It's here in the United States. It's in Ukraine. It's in Japan. You can see it. It's in Turkey. You can see it, guys. You can see it, and it's going to resurrect. Oh, that's not true. Fascism's not going to come back. Ooh. How in the hell do you explain Ukraine, guys? The fact that we are supporting fascists in Ukraine, the fact that Ukraine has a cult of personality for fascist, the fact that it has memorials and it has our, uh, it has an infrastructure named after fascists. The fact that it will deny the the crimes that its so supposed heroes have done, and the fact that we justify collaborating with these people in the name of fighting Russia, don't tell me fascism can't come back. Because when fascism does come back, guys, it's not going to be done in the name of some blatant evil. It's not going to be like, oh yeah, we hate the Jews, kill Jews. That's not what it's going to be. And if you think that's what, if you think that a revival of fascism has to be just that, it has to be like blatantly people getting up and say, oh yeah, we hate Jews. You're naive or you're a liar. You're just dishonest. Because people are smart enough to know that if they're going to push for an agenda, they better be doing some tactic in which they can try to get everyone to agree with them they're going to try to have overlap with people ideological overlap or political overlap to convince people to persuade people to be on their side it's not going to be oh yeah we hate jews oh yeah we love hitler hoo ha hoo hoo ha that's some hollywood bullshit okay that's some cnn bullshit oh yeah we interviewed some kkk guy in alabama and he lives in a 300 uh, you know he lives in a a, a thousand square foot house and bum shit Timbuktu in Alabama and, and no one even listens to him. Oh yeah, the leader of the KKK. No one even listens to him. That's some, that's some CNN bullshit, okay? It's not going to be that. It's going to be, oh well, we have to help these people. Yeah, but they're Nazis. Oh, that doesn't matter. They're, they're defending their country against imperialist Russia. We have to help them. And if you don't want to help them, then... You're 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 on the side of the imperialists. You're a Putin bot, and that that's what you are. You you, you are are no different than a Stalinist. You are a St Stalinist sympathizer. You're a Putin sympathizer. That's what it's gonna be. It's not gonna be. Oh yeah, we hate the Jew. <laughs> Some Hollywood bullshit. It's gonna begin as if you don't work with us in collaborating with these people. Or if we don't fight the Russians, then you know the world's going to end. And if you don't agree with us, then you're evil. That's what it's going to be. And you're already seeing it, guys. It's very simple. This is not complicated stuff. It's There's, a, there's even a term for this. Um, Mott and Bailey or something? What's it called? Mott and... M Mott and Bailey. The Mo is it Mott and Bailey or Mott and Bailey? I don't even know. What's the pronunciation for this thing? Mott and Bailey? What is it, Mott and Bailey or Mott and Bailey? Mott and Bailey. Mott and Bailey. So this is the Mott and Bailey tactic. So the Mott and Bailey tactic is in order to get people to agree with something that would otherwise be egregious or wrong, you get people to first agree with something that generally people can agree on, right? So generally people can agree that conquering a sovereign country is wrong, right? So like Russia invading Ukraine, that's wrong. Ukraine's a sovereign country. This is evil. Generally, you can get people to agree with that, right? That's really easy. So that's the moat, right? So there's the moat and there's the bailey. So the idea of a moat and bailey is that you have the moat around the castle. You have the, you have the, you have the general defense around the castle, and the idea is the whole concept of Mo, of Mott and Bailey is to break people's defenses to get them to agree with something that they otherwise would not agree with. So you have the Mott, right, which is the general defense around the castle. 
or it's like the structure that's around the main castle that defends the main castle. So that's what you have to get past. You have to get past that before you can get into the, the, the part of the castle that you really want, right? Which is the Bailey. So there's the Mott and there's the Bailey. What's the Mott? The Mott is Russia invaded a sovereign country. Oh, so we, we, we have to support Ukraine. Oh, okay, fine. So right there, you just broke through people's defenses, right? You just broke through them. Well, and here comes the Bailey. Well, there are some Nazis in Ukraine, and there is a cult of personality for Nazis, and they do love Nazi collaborators, and some of their biggest historical figures are Nazi collaborators. And, you know, they have some monuments dedicated to them, and, you know, and and they, and they do do torchlight ceremonies every year in dedication to uh, Stepan Bandera, who was a Nazi collaborator. And they do revere uh, Andrei Melnik, and they do revere Roman Stuchovich. And yeah, these guys were were bad, but you know this this is part of their culture. And 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 I mean, you can't support Russia. I mean, I mean, you don't want to support Russia because then you would be supporting you know fascists who are actually alive today. So. You know, we have to do this together. That's the Bailey. That's the Bailey. Well, not all Nazis are bad. Some of them are good. And some of them have really good intentions, you know? They have really good intentions. And and, and they're not really fascists, right? The real fascists are like those torchlight guys over there in North Carolina somewhere. That That's the real fascists, but not these guys. And by doing this tactic, they break down people's defenses, you see. And that's how it works. Bang it, a bang it, a bang it, a bang it, a bang it. That's how this shit works, guys. That's how this shit works. Oh, concentration camps in Ukraine. You know they're putting ethnic Russians in camps. Oh well, actually those Russians are pro-Putin, so that means that they're pro-imperialist. So that means that they're enemies of Ukraine. So that's okay. Well, you know, uh, Ukrainian cops—they're raiding. Uh, they're raiding uh, Russian churches. They're arresting Russian priests. You know, they're putting them in camps. Let's say hypothetically that this happens, and some of that actually has already happened. Well, those churches are, you know, they're pro-Putin, so it's okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. It's like those people who hate Islam, and they're actually Nazis. You know, they, they claim that they're against Islamic terrorism, but they're actually Nazis. Those exist. I know for a fact that those exist. Oh, well, you know, uh, they're building camps over there. That's kind of creepy. Don't you think? Oh, yeah, but they're putting Muslims in there. They're Middle Eastern folks, you know. You, you can kill those people. That's It's okay. Oh, okay. It's like, you know, in, in Sweden, there's a party called the Sweden Democrats. Literally, the party was founded by SS members. I mean, it's it's a far-right party. And they're like, what, second or third most popular party in Sweden now. It's like, well, you know, there's a, there's a party that was founded by Nazis in Sweden and they're you know, they're, they've gained a lot of popularity. Yeah, 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 but 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 they're against illegal immigration. So they're okay. Oh, okay. So the Mott would be, they're against illegal immigration, so they're, they're the good guys. The Bailey is, well, now you can actually support far-right lunatics. Oh, well, that's fine. Bam. Okay. See how it works? See how it works? It's very simple. It's very simple. It's not like, you know, the media, they'll have these stories where, They'll, 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 they'll interview like, oh, the, the leader of the KKK, you know, as if we're back in the 1920s and the KKK is like lynch mobbing people every week or something. It's like, then you look at the video and it's literally some overweight middle-aged man with square glasses and a, a baseball cap and a really filthy t-shirt that's like triple his size and he's in a bar somewhere, and he's like, yeah, well, I was in the Klan. I'm leading the Klan. Like, this is the leader of the KKK, guys. And, ooh, so, so scary. Oh. But then the same media will say, well, we're interviewing the leader of Azov. And he's one of the good guys. It's like, well, Azov's Nazi. No, 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 he's one of the good guys because he's fighting the Russians. You see how that shit works, guys? It is, it is sneaky as the devil himself. I was suggesting we bomb Belgrade. Если мы считаем друг друга братьями православными, не воюйте с нами.